from Washington, this is VOA News. U.S. diplomatic missions overseas remain under threat and closed. Former Turkish Army chief receives a life sentence for alleged coup plot. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. Nineteen U.S. embassies and consulates in the Mideast and Africa will remain closed during the rest of the week in the face of serious security threats. According to the New York Times newspaper, the closures are prompted by intercepts of communications involving the head of the al-Qaeda terror organization. Some embassies will reopen Monday after a day-long shutdown. They include Algiers, Baghdad, Dhaka, and Kabul. Nineteen others will remain shut, including Amman, Cairo, Sana'a, and Tripoli. Several key U.S. lawmakers say the threats about a possible imminent attack are the most specific they'd seen since al-Qaeda's 2001 terrorist attack on the United States. Pakistani security forces remain on high alert for a potential militant attack on high-profile targets in the capital Islamabad. Officials say they are acting on intelligence warnings that the Pakistani Taliban may attack such targets as the airport, the president's office, the national parliament, and a naval base. A Turkish court sentenced a former army chief to life in prison and dozens of others to long jail terms for an alleged conspiracy to overthrow the country's Islamist government. Dorian Jones reports from Istanbul the case is the culmination of a decade-long conflict between Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan and the country's secularist establishment. The former head of Turkey's armed forces, retired General Ilker Boshbur, was sentenced Monday to life in prison. The court ruled he was part of a terrorist conspiracy called the Genocon that sought to overthrow the government. Many of the 275 defendants on trial were also convicted of involvement in the plot and were sentenced to years and even decades in jail. The vast majority of those jailed were senior army officers. But journalists, academics, businessmen and politicians, including three opposition members of parliament, were also among those convicted. 21 others were acquitted. Dorian Jones of VOA News, Istanbul, Turkey. Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood says a jailhouse meeting between a senior leader of the Islamist group and international envoys was unproductive. Karad El Shatir, the deputy chief of the Brotherhood, who was jailed on charges of inciting violence, met with U.S. Deputy Secretary of State William Burns, along with some European and Arab diplomats. A Brotherhood spokesman said Shatir told the international envoys they were wasting their time and should be talking to ousted President Mohamed Morsi. Also in Cairo, U.S. Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham, they're there at the request of the White House for talks with Egyptian military leaders. Rescue and relief operations continue in Pakistan and Afghanistan following flash floods caused by heavy monsoon rains which inundated many parts of the region. More than 100 people have been killed in both countries. VOA's Sharon Bain has more. Monsoon rains over the weekend left a trail of destruction. Dozens of people were killed in the flash floods, some electrocuted by fallen power lines, others crushed as their houses collapsed. Whole villages were washed away and cars swept off the roads in northwest Pakistan. In the southern port of Karachi, water levels along some streets were waist high. Before hitting Pakistan, the storm killed at least 58 people in five Afghan provinces, while an estimated 30 others remain missing. In Kabul's Sarobi district, authorities say 34 people were killed in a remote and mountainous area. Sharon Bain, VOA News, Islamabad. Major League Baseball suspended 13 players, including New York Yankee superstar Alex Rodriguez, for their links to a now-closed clinic that allegedly supplied them with banned performance-enhancing drugs. 
Rodriguez, who is baseball's highest paid player with an annual salary of $25 million, was suspended Monday for 211 games. He plans to appeal the decision and can play while it is being considered. His suspension would extend through the entire 2014 season. The other 12 players all agreed to 50-game suspensions that begin immediately. The founder of Internet retail giant Amazon, Jeffrey Bezos, is buying one of the top U.S. newspapers. The Washington Post announced Monday that Bezos will buy the paper and its affiliated publications for $250 million. It said Amazon has no role in the purchase. Post Chairman Donald Graham said the paper would be better served with another owner, saying that newspaper industry challenges, including declining revenue, led to its sale. I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. More at voanews.com.